Hello, I would like to welcome you to lecture 14 of 2FH3. We will wrap up today the last part of uh, chapter 5. So we'll be discussing continuity equation, relaxation time, and boundary conditions. Uh, and this covers uh, chapter 5, pages 192 to 206. The boundary conditions part are especially important because you'll be using it over and over again through the rest of this course. We have discussed so far um, the fact that when there is an electric field inside a conductor, this electric field gives rise to current, and uh, we agreed that the current density in this case J is equal to sigma E, and sigma is a conductivity. Um, now, if we uh, if we draw a, a, if we consider a volume, um, something like this one here, and the current is flowing out from that volume, so let's assume that current there is a current flow out from that volume. If the net current flow is positive, then the integral of uh, g dot ds is positive. This means there is a net uh, flow of positive charges from that volume to the outside world, which implies that the ch positive charges within that volume, the positive charges within that volume are decreasing with time. So this is what we call continuity equation. If there is a net positive charge flowing out from a volume, then the charge inside must be decreasing with time. And this is what's called the continuity equation. And if you take a look at it here, we say that the current flowing out from a certain volume is equal to the integral over the closed service enclosing that volume of g, of g dot ds. But current, by definition, is the rate of change of the charge. And uh, because the current is flowing out, the charge Q inside must be decreasing with time. This is why you have this negative sign here. It is simply saying if we have a positive current, then dq by partial q partial t must be negative. And then you must have a negative sign here. But what is q? What is the total charge inside this volume? This total charge is nothing but the integral over the volume of rho volumetric d volume. So, uh, so now what we do and one more step, we replace, we use diversion theorem. We replace the integral over the surface of g dot ds by the integral over the volume of self of divergence j d volume. And we equate the right-hand side and the left-hand side. And when you have two integrals like this one, two integrals being carried out over the volume, then uh, the, the integrands themselves must be equal. Then divergence j must be equal to minus partial rho v partial t. So this is another way of stating the continuity equation, simply saying, if the uh, positive charge density is decreasing at one point, so if partial V partial T is decreasing, then this number is negative. And then when you multiply it by a negative sign, you get a positive number. This means that the current is flowing out, diverging from that point. This means that the positive charges are leaving that point. So we have two ways of looking at divergence, the uh, this, uh, this continuity equation. The first one is the integral form. The current flowing out from a closed service is equal to negative rate of change of the charge enclosed. Because if, charges, if the charges are leaving the service in the form of current, then the charge enclosed is decreasing with time. The second one is the point form, is a differential form, which is simply saying that the divergence of J is partial rho V partial T. So if partial rho V partial T is negative, the charges at one point in space are decreasing with time. Then, if I multiply this with a negative sign, I get a positive number. Then the divergence of J is positive. So this is saying that the electric current is flowing out, is diverging from that point. And remember that electric current is, is really the direction of the electric current is the direction of flow of positive charges here. So the continuity equation is one of the most important things we'll need in this course. It's considered the, um, um, uh, a supplement to Maxwell's equations, as you'll see later when we talk about Maxwell's equation in general. But it's, it's a very important thing to relate the current flow to the uh, volumetric charge density. One byproduct of the continuity equation is what we call the concept of relaxation time. If we start by some volume, uh, by if we have some volume here, some volume V, and you give it some initial charge rho V, some uh, charge density rho V column per meter cubed, then it can be shown that with time, this, this volumetric charge tend to spread towards the surface. They the all try to accumulate after time goes to infinity at the surface. They like to leave the volume and reside on the surface of this, um, of this volume. 
So this means that the volumetric charge density decreases with time. It must be decreasing with time, or what, what we call it's relaxing with time. So, uh, so this is really the main part here. So we say that if we start by initial uh, charge density inside a certain volume, then the charge was dispersed towards the boundaries with time. They must try to disperse towards the boundary. How can, how can you prove that? We start from the continuity equation, which just, we just proved. Divergent J is, is minus partial rho V partial T. Uh, this is simply saying that if the, uh, at any point in space is current flowing out from one point, then the charge, the positive charge at this point must be decreasing. Now we know that if we have a conductor, conductor means the conductivity is not zero. It does have to be a perfect conductor. It's a conductor. Then we can replace J by sigma E. And we know that the divergence of uh, D, we talked about that before, divergence of D is equal to rho volumetric. And D is nothing but epsilon E, so we can replace divergence of E by rho volumetric over epsilon. So I can take epsilon out from the divergence if it does not vary with position, and I have this expression here. And this is what we used here. We, we started with continuity equation, diversion J is equal to minus partial rho V partial T. I will replace J by sigma E, so sigma can move to the other side. And then I will replace divergence E by rho V over epsilon. So I obtain one differential equation in, in rho V only. There is no E or J. And this is the form of this equation here. This is simply saying that uh, the rate of change of the volumetric charge density with time is equal to some constant multiplied by rho v. And if you remember, the solution of this one is an exponential, exponential term. And uh, here the solution would be uh, rho v is equal to some initial volumetric charge, which will, have, which will have to be determined, multiplied by e to the minus t over t uh, relaxation or relaxation time. And this relaxation time is, not, is, not, is nothing but the inverse of this quantity here, which is epsilon over sigma. So this will tell you that over time, from this expression, if you start by initial volumetric charge density, rho v naught, as shown here, then as time goes by, the charge density will be decreasing with time. And as time goes to infinity, that the volumetric charge density must be zero, because all these charges will disperse and will reside on the surface. They become surface charge densities, not, uh, not the volume charge densities. So now, if sigma is infinity, if sigma is infinity, as in the case of conductors, then the relaxation time is equal to uh, zero. Means it takes zero time for the charge to uh, to uh, for the volumetric charge to go from inside the conductor, the perfect conductor, to the boundaries. If sigma is equal to zero, as in the case of an ideal dielectric, ideal insulator, then you will see that T rise will be infinity or T relaxation will be infinity. This means, it simply means that uh, it takes an infinite time for this volumetric charge density to start to dis disperse and reside on the, bound on the boundaries. So this is very important, this concept of relaxation time. So for any material, that uh, as long as it has some conductivity, then after a certain period of time, the volumetric charge density must start to decrease with time, and then the charges will reside on the surface. Now let's take a look at two examples. Uh, the first one here, we have uh, current density J equal to 100 over rho squared A rho. So this is a current flowing in the rho direction, and it varies only with rho. We would like to find the rate of increase of the volumetric charge density, so partial rho V partial T, and the total current flowing through the surface rho equal to 2, Z between zero, uh, 0 and 1, and phi between 0 and 2 pi. The, sur the surface over which we are calculating this uh, current is really a cylinder. I'm just showing here a top view of this cylinder. So the current is flowing in the radial direction, as you, as you could see here, in the rho direction. Um, and it, it does decrease with rho. And we have the expression for the volumetric charge density at any, uh, for the, from the continuity equation, we have the expression for the rate of change of the volumetric charge density. Divergence of J is equal to minus partial, uh, minus partial rho v partial t. So I know what I know j. I can apply the divergence expression in cylindrical coordinates, and this will give me with a negative sign partial rho v partial t.
So we carry out this expression, and because rho, uh, the uh, the current has only a rho component, as you could see here, I only keep the part of the uh, of the divergence that that, that differentiates uh, j rho. The other parts I simply ignore them. Then divergence j is equal to one over rho partial partial rho one hundred over rho. This will give me minus one hundred rho squared the derivative. You divide by another rho, you get min minus one hundred over rho cubed. Uh, here, this is a divergence. And this, of course, is equal to minus partial rho v partial t. This is from the continuity equation. So we know that the rate of change of the volumetric charge density varies from one point to another as 100 over rho cubed column per meter cubed per second. Remember, rho v has units of column per meter cubed. And when you, and when you differentiate relative to time, this is equivalent to dividing by one more second, so it's column per meter cubed per second. Now, the service that we want to calculate the current on is a cylindrical service, and we know in this, on this cylindrical service that the, uh, that the uh, service element, uh, and we talked about this before in many of the tutorials, if we have the service like this one, then the service element is this one here, this one here is dz, this one here is uh, rho d phi. So it is rho d phi dz, this is, this is a service element, and it's pointing in the rho direction. So when you do dot product between j dot ds, j and ds will have the same direction, the rho direction. And so I'm, I'll be integrating one half over rho square. ds is rho d phi dz, and z will go from 0 to 1, phi from 0 up to 2 by. Uh, of course, you divide, of course, rho will cancel with rho squared. We get 1 over rho. And uh, this, this service is a cylinder. Uh, its radius is 2, then I can simply replace rho by 2 because I'm not integrating relative to rho here. So this will give you 100 over 50, 100 over, over 2, this will give me 50 here. So the integral of 50 d phi dz, the integral of d phi will give you 2 pi, the integral of dz will give us 1. So the answer will be 100 pi or 314.16 amperes. This is the total current flowing from the surface of that cylinder, and this is the rate of change here for the volumetric charge density. We consider also an example on the concept of uh, relaxation time. We have here uh, the electric sphere of radius 20 millimeters, so it's two centimeters. It would it, it, uh, a light, lightning stri uh, str uh, stroke th strike this one, uh, this uh, the electric sphere, and uh, it delivered to that sphere uh, a charge of one column. So we have here a one column delivered to that sphere, and it was uniformly distributed over the volume. And we would like to determine the initial volumetric charge density, and we would like to determine the charge density after two microseconds. Uh, and of course, here we are given the, uh, the relative permittivity and the conductivity. Notice conductivity is very low. It's five, ten to five micro siemens per meter. For conductors, it's, it's, it's way, it's a very large number. Um, and the epsilon r for this, for this dielectric is 2.5. So what is happening here when lightning strikes this, this sphere, it delivers to it a charge of one column, which we call it here Q, and this charge will, will uniformly disperse, will be uniformly distributed in the, in the volume. So we can get the initial charge density at time zero by dividing the, the charge Q, which is one column, over the complete volume of, the, uh, of that sphere. Uh, now... If we later time because the sphere is having this volumetric charge density, these charges will start to spread toward the surface. They start to move toward the surface, and the volumetric charge density, uh, the volumetric charge density will start to decrease with time. So the expression that we discussed that uh, rho v is equal to rho v naught e to the minus t over t relaxation. Rho v naught we already will obtain from this expression will divide the initial charge by the volume. T relaxation is relaxation time, and we agree this is a function uh, of epsilon and sigma. So we'll have to calculate that as well. But once I have the relaxation time, once I have rho v naught, I can calculate the volumetric charge density for any time t. So here we uh, start first by calculating the initial volumetric charge density. It's Q over the volume of the sphere, 4, or 4, 4 over 3 by r cubed, and r is equal to 2 centimeters. Uh, if you simplify that, uh, this will here will give us 10 to the power 6. If you divide all the numbers, you get 0.029, 4, or this will give us 
29.84 kilo column per meter cubed kilo column per meter cubed so it's a it's a huge uh, charge density because one column is very big and uh, the sphere has a small radius so the charge density is pretty high 29.84 kilo column per meter cubed now if we first calculate the relaxation time relaxation time is by definition epsilon over sigma epsilon is equal to epsilon r multiplied by epsilon naught epsilon r is 2.5 epsilon naught 1 over 36 pi 10 to the minus 9 sigma is 5 10 to the minus 6 if you simplify these together uh, this one will cancel this one will give you 2 we'll multiply by 36 pi you get 72 pi 10 to the minus 6 and 10 to the minus 9 will give you 10 to the minus 3 uh, and if we divide this and simplify, you will get that the relaxation time is 4.42 microseconds, which is very, very short time, very short time. Um, so this means that even for a, for, a, for a dielectric with low conductivity, the relaxation time is pretty short. So now for any other time, we know that the expression governing the volumetric charge density, that the volumetric charge density is equal to the initial volumetric charge density multiplied by e to the minus t over relaxation time because the charge density is decreasing with time. So we substitute here at 2 microseconds. This is the initial charge density we just calculated. This is the time 2 microseconds and this is the relaxation time that we have. If you divide these two together, you get 0.452, uh, 0.452, and uh, you get uh, you, read, you raise this one to a power of e, e to the minus that, e to the minus 0.452. Uh, this will give you a number you multiply by 29.84. If you simplify this, you get 18.98 kilo column per meter cube. So you can see in just two microseconds, the charge density dropped from from 29.84 kilo column per meter cubed to only 18.98 kilo column per meter cubed and it's obvious as time proceeds the charge density will tend to zero in, in, in infinity it will reach zero volumetric charge density because all charges will tend to reside on the surface